Hello, in this video I'm going over Chapter 8 Problems P1. And so our first part is about the rental and P2 is going to be about the Schedule K1s on the personal side. We've covered all of the K1s from the business side, but then each partner or um, or owner reports their Schedule K-1 on their personal return, which of course is treated differently. So, okay, this first problem is pretty straightforward. Kelvin owns and lives in a duplex. He rents the other unit for $7.30 per month. He incurs the following expenses, mortgage interest, property taxes, utilities, fixed a light fixture in the rental unit versus fixing something in the personal unit, painted the entire exterior, insurance depreciation. So one thing you have to really assume here, right, is they don't give a square fee of the personal area and the rental. So we have to assume that it's 50-50, which isn't a far reach for a duplex, although um, in real life I would certainly ask. So then down here you're asked to identify what are personal expenses, what of those expenses are deductible in Schedule A, and what expenses and income are reported on Schedule E. So of course the rental income is going to be on Schedule E, and then basically 50% of all of these expenses are going to be allocated to the rental and to the personal. Now, of those, these two will not be, right? Because one is going to be related to the rental, one is only to the personal. And because they're just fixing something, this is just repairs and maintenance, a regular deduction. Now, mortgage interest and property taxes is a Schedule A deduction, right? Um, and so you can fill this out accordingly. You're going to have different numbers, um, but that one I think is pretty straightforward. Now this one is a little bit trickier. Janet owns a home by the lake and she incurs the following expenses. So similar expenses, mortgage interest, property taxes, insurance, utilities, repairs, and depreciation. Now, we're going to look at a bunch of situations, four different situations, A, B, C, D. What is the proper treatment of rental income and expenses in each of the following cases? Use the tax court allocation method. So if you look up in your book for vacation homes, there's quite a bit of rules to, to, to determine if it's primarily a rental, primarily personal, or part rental, part personal. Um, and how you allocate the expenses is the tax court method and the IRS method. And that's because the IRS is said to do it one way. The IRS makes all sorts of guidance and rules. But then in tax court, um, those rules can be overruled. And so that's why I stated that this problem represents kind of how our system works and why things aren't as straightforward um, when it comes to complicated situations and just DIYing, like, oh, I can just follow the instructions. Well, not really, because it's quite a bit more complicated than that. Um, and, and that's what tax people are paid to know. So essentially, the difference between the tax court method and the IRS method when you allocate the expenses, it's how you allocate the expenses. It's an allocation method. In the tax court method, you allocate the rental days by 365 days versus in the IRS method, you allocate the rental days based on total rental days and personal use days only. So those vacant days aren't allocated. Um, however, if a property is, if you're trying to rent a property, then that typically counts as under days rented as well, which is kind of a more common situation than it just sitting there. 
Um, and so you can see that down here. So to allocate, obviously income isn't allocated. That's going to be completely taxable. You're going to fill out each of these situations. So situation A here under this first column, 9,400 of income. And then we've got to allocate based on 45 days divided by the 365 days for all of the different expenses. And that's going to be the amount allocated to Schedule E. Now, of course, we again, right, the owner can deduct um, mortgage interest and property taxes for the personal use on Schedule A. Now, if a rental is rented less than 14 days, so they say less than 15 days, 14 days or less, then you don't have to report the income. You don't report anything, right? No income or expenses. Um, if the amount is, if you rent for more than 15 days or 10% of, or, or you use it for personal more than 10% of the rental days and it's considered part rental, part personal and anything rented more than that is considered primarily a rental. So again, you'll have different numbers, but you can refer to this to fill it out. I hope that helps clarify these different methods. Again, the tax court method is based on allocating your expenses over the rental days divided by 365 days, and you get your percentage to times by the total mortgage interest for this line based on 45 divided by 365. So obviously the IRS method is a bit more advantageous because it would be 45 plus 10, 55. It would be 45 divided by 55 only, which would be almost 100% times the expense. You're only allocating the expenses over the days used. All right. Hope that helps. See you in the next video.